All right, everyone, you see in the title and thumbnail, this is not a joke, it's not a mock-up, this is the real thing, the PlayStation 5 controller, it's not called DualShock, DualSense, let's go over all the details and everything you need to know. In what was a pretty boring random Tuesday, Sony decided to just drop this on the PlayStation blog, which, keep in mind, that's what we're looking at moving forward here. We can't do live events at a venue, a reveal event, the traditional sense, right? So this is what we got, a PS blog post about the controller. So here it is. Let's go over all the details. Controller is, in fact, called DualSense. So the DualShock name is no more. That's a pretty big departure. We'll talk about that in a second. Sony says the features of the DualSense, along with the PS5's Tempest 3D audio tech, will deliver a new feeling of immersion to players. This controller, just like the DualShock 4, was led by fan and developer feedback, keeping much of what was the same and building upon it. Based on the developer feedback, the sense of touch, much like audio, hasn't really played a huge role in games and game development. This is Sony talking about why they've adopted haptic feedback, a feature we already knew was present on the PS5's controller. They're just talking about it more here. This will add a variety of powerful sensations when you're uh, playing a game. So, for example, uh, feeling slow grittiness when you're driving a car through mud, uh, feeling it to be very slick when you're walking around on ice in a platformer. There's also the adaptive triggers and the L2 and R2 buttons feeling real tension. So like when you pull back on a bow to shoot an arrow, that would feel a, a bit more weighted. So the controller, of course, looks a bit more bulky. Sony explains they worked closely with their engineers to basically move the parts around in such a way where, in person, this controller might appear actually a lot smaller than you think. Sony notes the angle of the hand triggers have been changed along with subtle updates to the grips. They didn't want this thing to be too heavy, basically. That was their main goal. It will be rechargeable, of course. We know that. Uh, it will be using USB-C. You can see that in the pictures, finally. Sony says they're going for a stronger battery life. Uh, no details there. We'll see what that is the case when we actually do some testing with this thing. The share button, it's still there, but it's now being dubbed the create button. Sony isn't sharing any details on what that means just yet, but they're building upon the feature for capturing your gameplay. So there's probably a lot more plans that they have uh, with that in mind. DualSense will now have a built-in microphone, so you're gonna be able to make it a lot more easier, a lot more accessible for quick chat. So if you don't have a microphone, you can still chat, or if you don't have one plugged in, this is just very accessible. Do it right from the controller. Uh, I would be very interested to see just how good the audio quality is from that thing. We, of course, have a quote here from President and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Jim Ryan. He says, DualSense marks a radical departure from our previous controller offerings and captures just how strongly we feel about making a generational leap with PS5. The new controller, along with the many innovative features in PS5, will be transformative for games, continuing our mission at PlayStation to push the boundaries of play. Now, and in the future, to the PlayStation community, I truly want to thank you for sharing this exciting journey with us as we head towards PS5's launch in holiday 2020. We look forward to sharing more information about PS5, including the console design, in the coming months. So there you go. We finally got some very meaty PS5 information. You see the controller. What do you think? Uh, you know, honestly, I think it looks... I like it. I like it a lot. Um, right when I saw it, I was like... Right when I saw that, I was like, well, it kind of looks like a weird little cheap third-party controller, but you look at it a little bit more, and it kind of has a very sleek nature to it, I think. It is a bit more bulky looking like, uh, say, an Xbox 360 or even an Xbox One controller, which I think those are very comfortable. The 360 controller, in my opinion, is extremely comfortable. We have these same sticks uh, from the PlayStation 4, so it's like a mix of concave and convex. Uh, what I also kind of took away immediately, not just the two-tone design, but rather the the face buttons. They're actually the same color as the controller, whereas usually, despite whatever color the case of the controller is, the PlayStation buttons are gray, with obviously the colored uh, symbol. So that was interesting to me. The D-pad kind of looks, uh, again, it's it almost looks like it's uh, glossy, right? So the the base of the controller is plastic, but these buttons almost look like they're from, not directly from PlayStation Vita, but they've got that gloss finish to it. I wonder if that's really gonna be the case, and I wonder if they feel as tactile and clicky as from uh, the Vita's, uh, from the Vita's buttons. Uh, the PlayStation button is also actually carved out completely, right? Like, it's not just a round button, it's actually the entire logo is, uh, turned into that button from edge to edge, right? I like where they put the light bar. Uh, that was always kind of like my weird gripe about the light bar. I never had a problem with it, but I always thought as cool as it is, you don't really ever get to see it. Uh, developers have actually used it a lot in terms of just changing the color of it, right? It's not something that they really have to go out of their way to 
do something crazy with the light bar, right? Uh, this is what we talk about when we uh, mention really crazy peripherals that try to do a little bit too much on a console. The light bar wasn't that crazy though, so developers always, you know, made it like your health bar or some sort of stress signal, but you never really saw it. It was meant to initially be for color designate or uh, player designations, right? Player two's red, player three's uh, what green, right? Uh, immediately, but again, that changes uh, by game. But you never really see that. At the very least, bezeling it around the light bar, I think, or around the touchpad, looks a lot cooler. The previously announced features we already know of, right? Haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, we know that's there, so that's all well and good. Um, of course, the big takeaway here is that because it's a two-tone design, what does this mean for the PlayStation 5 console design? Because, uh, well, the fact that this is the very first controller they're showing means it's going to be shipping as a white with, uh, you know, it looks black, but, uh, you know, it actually kind of looks more navy for that, uh, that darker color. So this is actually... I don't even know where this is going to go at this point. I think the uh, the console design might actually go and uh, might look white, right? Might have some. I don't know if they would do two time two tone for the console. That would maybe look a little a little bizarre. But I'm thinking that it will probably be a white machine, which would be a pretty big uh, departure from what we normally see with Sony consoles. Uh, I'm actually really intrigued by this controller a lot. I like that it's um a def I like that it's different but i don't, I don't think it's radically different i'm already seeing on twitter a bunch of people doing different mock-ups of different colors so i think that's something sony's going to do a lot down the road you know i would love for them to do a design studio like microsoft did with the uh, xbox one controllers uh and i think they do it for the elite series as well i might be mistaken about that but they have a design studio where you can pretty much uh bespoke your own controller with colors engraving and they'll ship it out to you of course it's a little more expensive but i would think that would be pretty cool for something like this although that's kind of irrelevant uh the dual sense name though that's kind of also i mean i guess it's not really a huge deal the thing about playstation and their naming scheme it's like the consoles themselves, they it got to a point where once we were past PlayStation 4, you know every single console past that is going to be numerical, right? Uh, 4 was kind of the odd one out where a lot of people are speculating maybe it would be called just PlayStation or they do some sort of different uh, nomenclature for the main line of consoles. So they've, they've gone too far now. That'll always be 5, 6, 7, assuming they keep doing more traditional consoles down the road. But uh, I... I think the controller is a situation where they were allowed to get away with calling it something else because let's face it, it's the controller, right? Are we really going to go stir crazy about not calling it DualShock 5? Not really. I think that's where they can get away with something like that. So it's called DualSense, uh, trying to make it seem a little bit more just that, uh, more meaningful, that you're supposed to really be more uh, immersed into your gameplay. So that's obviously where they're going with something like that, and that's fine. Uh, I just want to actually use it now and see it in person. I wonder if it is as small and light as they're making it out to be. Well, they're not saying straight out that it's light, but rather they just don't want this thing, this thing to be overly bulky, overly heavy, and uh, that's fine by me. Another thing to note, of course, is that this controller looks nothing like the patents we've seen before, right? So that's what we uh, were discussing for a little bit now is that we've seen a lot of patents out of SIE about a different controller. One of them was a bit more bulky, but that looked a lot like a DualShock 4. In fact, that's what confused so many people when we talked about those patents is that it looked a lot like a DualShock 4 and people thought, oh, it's just a DS4, this isn't PS5. But there were a lot of minor changes where you think, no, that's definitely a different controller. And those were the prototypes that they were shipping out with the dev kits. We've got pictures of those controllers. They very much looked, uh, look a lot different. Although Sony has now mentioned that they are shipping these out to developers right now so assuming that there's anything extra baked into these controllers that the prototypes didn't already have developers can start accounting for that once they get these more uh, finalized semi retail looking controllers you'd imagine that because they're showing us this this is pretty much um, what it's going to look like i don't think there's going to be much that's uh, subject to change on this thing another thing i want to mention actually was the back button attachment remember when we did a review of that uh, right when it came out and a lot of people at the time were thinking, is this for PlayStation 5? Is this them testing the waters? Is this going to be on the PS5 controller? Which, no, you don't really put something like that on the stock controller that you ship to everybody. But I felt that that back button attachment might be something where it works on DualShock 4 
and DualShock 5. Of course, now we see that's not going to fit on there. So um, it does make it a bit more puzzling that they did that back button attachment so late into the game on the PS4 life cycle. But there's still a lot of uh, there's a lot of consoles out there, so it's not like it wasn't really a bad deal for people that want to spend 30 bucks to buy that thing. And that thing's still actually out of stock like everywhere. People can't even buy that that uh, that back button attachment. But uh, assuming that that does well, which it looks like it's doing well, although there's obviously supply constraints there. Maybe we'll see another back button attachment on the DualSense. That, this is going to be hard to get used to now. i got to start calling it DualSense instead of a DualShock 5. That is going to be a very tough habit to break. But otherwise, that is it. That is the PlayStation 5 controller, DualSense. We're getting there, people. It's going to take uh, a few more weeks, a few more months. Sony mentions that we will see the PS5 console design within the coming months. They're being very vague, but it can't be that much longer. They're also reiterating, re, reiterating holiday 2020. So again, if you're concerned about coronavirus, I still think it's there's too much uncertainty here where the company doesn't have to say it's delayed because they don't even really know. But Microsoft and Sony are still committing to holiday 2020. And this is one of those things where there's going to be a lot of opinions out there. So by all means, let me hear it. I would love to know what most of you think about this controller. Initially, I thought oh, it looks a little too weird and third party. But the, more, the longer I looked at it, I thought... All right, I dig it. I could definitely get down with something like this, but uh, the controller is very reflective of the console design, and I think that's where we're going to see something uh, a lot different. Everyone wants to always compare it to, say, the Series X console design, but remember, Sony just doesn't, you know, they're not very traditional in that sense. They like to do a very stylized box. Look at the PS2, the PS3, the PS4, PS1, pretty basic for the most part, but they do uh, try to make their hardware a little bit I don't know, for lack of a better word, exotic looking. Very nice looking. They want it to fit in with your entertainment center, be a nice looking piece of tech. So they're probably going to keep that tradition with PlayStation 5. And that's why they're so worried about uh, the power draw, the heat dissipation, the cooling method, because they are going to go They are going to go that route. They're not going to make a big tower like Series X. They're not going to make a you know, VCR looking thing like X1. Those machines were great at staying cool and being quiet, but Sony just doesn't do that. And so this is their efforts to combat that to keep their design language and go the route of being a quiet not jet engine box if you will but that's it for this impromptu news update we will of course be here on friday to cover up any details that we may have missed it's been a fascinating week uh, we also had that deve uh, developer interview from crytech that we totally got to go over so uh, we will be here on friday for that uh, of course this was tuesday right so we had a regular upload PS3 leaks and rumors, uh, go check that out. That was like the PS4 video where we looked at leaks and rumors prior to see how many were correct about PlayStation 3, which some of those date back to like early 2000s. So uh, that video is live on the channel alongside this one. And uh, you can follow on Twitter at Mystic Ryan to keep up with the PS5 news and channel updates just like when this is going up. And that is it. I will see you all on Friday. You take it easy.